Hi, I'm Paweł Spychalski and it's time for another monthly or so new hardware video. In today's video we're gonna have radios, we're gonna have ESCs, we're gonna have things I'm not really sure what they are for and some other interesting design but let's begin with the... not with the drone uh, but let's begin with the ESC. I personally think that 30 amp ESC is fully enough what we need in multi-rotor drones uh, because the chance that the motor can pull more than 30 amps from our battery and if you multiply it by for it. No, it's not really happening. However, for quite a, some time manufacturers are putting bigger and bigger MOSFETs, so as the result the ESCs are higher and higher rated. And example of such an ESC I have over here today, it's the Foxeer Reaper 65 Amps. We will not go in details how it looks like because from the outside it's just ESC, however it's rated for 65 Amps and I honestly doubt there is a chance you will ever cross even remotely close to the limit of the ESC. Um, there are some perks of having uh, bigger MOSFETs because the chance that you will burn the ESC are quietly smaller, the bigger MOSFET probably has the uh, lower internal resistance so in theory it can deliver slightly more torque and power to the motor and I do have to say yes I love this ESC. Uh, I switched from the Teco 32-35 to the Reaper 65 on this quad and I have to say that uh, for the first time I was able to rip the blades from the V1 Foxeer fault propellers. Not the V2s I have over here but the V1s. On the previous uh, uh, ESC it was impossible on this new 65 Reaper I made a punch out and the poof, everything like exploded and I lost three propellers at once. So for sure the ESC seems to be delivering much more torque and in general it's a it's a, I think it makes sense. It makes sense. Still, you will not probably ever use it, but thanks to the lower res internal resistance there are like good things of using the bigger ESC. It's only 48 kilohertz but for the majority of the applications we are using we are we have in our uh, rc drone related hobby it's more than enough next after like more than a month waiting for the customs to finally <laughs> make their magic about uh, the package i have on my hands the radio master t8 pro the pro the the small compact size radio that is rather for the tiny whoops or something uh, smaller than you can pack with no problem to your back and go flying somewhere. This is the direct competition from the for the jumper we covered already some time ago so we will not be covering and the major difference of the T8 from the small jumper is that A, the, uh, this is not that simple but Hey, the screen is detachable, so now you have radio without the screen. There are those, I think, stops so you can rest your fingers over here. So actually the radio feels quite nice in your, uh, in your hand and it has the carrying strap, which Radio Master unfortunately lacks. I was not yet using this thing, however, however, I do have intention to bind this to one of the planes I want to uh, make them very soon because mainly of the next strap attachment so I can just do not have to have this thing in my uh, hands all the time. The biggest advantage probably of this thing is the detachable screen so you do not have to have the screen attached and also probably the biggest problem with the radio is that it has the detachable screen and to be honest wherever you will need the screen you will not have it with you. But um, the detailed video of the T8 Pro will follow and uh, definitely feels very 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 stiff so it's actually a good sign so expect a video about this comparing to the jumper and then we will know more the next radio on the list is something well from the completely different price range i got I have not bought it, but I got it to implement the Yeti telemetry on the INAV. I got the, my first Yeti transmitter. Uh, this is not OpenTX and this is completely different price range than anything OpenTX we are using because the radio itself, I think it's like 600 or 500 euros. So it's a pretty expensive stuff. And when you turn it off, you clearly see that this is the 
Oh, it's beeping. That this is definitely not the OpenTX. Um, I'm not sure if I will actually record any review of this thing because I'm not sure it makes sense, but hmm, it's definitely an interesting design. Feels different. It's definitely more for the airplane pilots than for the mini multi-rotor drones because of the price range, how it's uh, how the sticks and all the switches are located, the size and the weight of this thing. And some people say that maybe not DS12, but the higher version is just incredible quality. Perhaps uh, so far I'm kind of slightly lost in the menus and uh, all the things that you can set up over there. Uh, but overall, let's say I don't like the short throw on the gimbals uh, because even with relatively long stick at the moment, the throw is rather short and definitely this is not for flying mini rotor mini mini drones, but for airplanes I can see it has some perks. And like I mentioned, it's not open TX. Probably the problem is uh, I think lack of really small receivers. But you know, you cannot really have everything. Next two things are something I got from the VFly. And the VFly, the company that pre that is making those uh, battery powered buzzers and other small accessories. And today I have two. One is the strobe light. Um, what else to say? It's the strobe light. You turn it on, okay. And it's not, ah, it turned on. And it starts to blink with the standard strobe, so you put it with the velcro to your aircraft when you are flying in the evening or in the night, or you can even change the way it's blinking and switch, for example, to red or there should be also a green. So with enough of the devices like that, you can have full position lights to your airplane. Rather not the drone, but rather an airplane. This is uh, interesting enough because each of those little strobes has the independent batteries, so there is no need to put the wire that will go to the tip of the wing or, or the tail or anything like that. And also probably this is the problem that, well, you will have to charge it each of those independently, but when you are flying in the night putting a strobe on your thing um, kind of makes sense. I do see uh, usage for the strobe lights like this. I do. I do see the usage. But the second thing I got from the VFly is something I'm not really sure I understand. Um, the thing I have over here is called the GPS Mate. It's a, it's a lipo, it's the buzzer and uh, you connect this thing between your flight controller and the GPS unit. So when the battery on the drone or airplane is disconnected or dead or whatever, the GPS is still powered. You might ask what's really the use for something like that and the only practical use for anything like that is that when you are changing the batteries, when you are swapping the batteries, you are not losing the fix. So you do not have to wait until the GPS will get the fix again. And it's usually not very long if the battery on the GPS is not completely depleted, but let's say you will have to wait from time to time, like few seconds, maybe up to one minute before you can fly with the fix. Um, honestly, I'm, uh, I'm not convinced. I'm not sold by the, by the thing, but if you are suffering from the fact that after you change the battery, your GPS goes offline for too long, you might actually buy this and connect this between your flight controller and the ES and the GPS so that basically the GPS is never powered down and you can turn it off with the switch. So that's the functionality of the GPS mate. Uh, originally, I thought that maybe this is used to somehow get the position of even if the GPS, if the battery is di disconnected when you crash, but then, okay, you power the GPS, but what about the flight controller? So it's really like getting complicated and keeping the fix uh, when you have a weak GPS or the G battery on your GPS receiver is depleted is probably the only practical use for the thing. That's the reality.
Next, we do drones, we love drones and I especially I'm very much into the 7 inch quadcopters and I have something like this. Thanks to Xtech Synthe I got the Darwin 129 almost ready to fly, you only have to install the uh, the receiver, I have not done this yet because I got the package only yesterday and uh, this is like the long range equipped drone because it has the GPS uh, receiver out of the box however it looks like it's a GPS Baytian BN180 no magnetometer so you will be able to use it to probably only with the beta flight to really like get the current position, speed and the distance and use the GPS rescue. Not the return to home, but the GPS rescue. Um, there are some accessories, so basically if you have a radio, if you have the batteries, you just install the receiver, go flying and it should be done. I checked what's installed by default, it's the relatively old Betaflight 4.1 with some strange tune. I really, I really do wonder how the default uh, tune uh, will be working on this, because it's a definitely a custom tune. And the uh, on, only thing I can say right now is to thank for the Xtech Synthe to actually give me opportunity to look at this it looks kind of like the Alpha Monster 7 inch, right? Right. And next, um, next is something that um, might actually be quite popular in the future because thanks to Cadix, I got the new camera they have for the DJI Digital FPV. It's the Polar Vista kit, but there is no Vista, it's just a Polar antenna and they call it a Starlight Camera. Uh, starlight. What does it mean camera? In theory it can work in the low light conditions, so in theory it should allow us to fly maybe not during the complete darkness, but rather in the night when the amount of light is very limited. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, there is a price to pay. Cadix says that the uh, quality on the image quality of the Polar is somewhere between the uh, regular Nebula and the Nebula Pro. And we all know that the Nebula Pro has really superb image quality, while the Nebula not so much. So I really do wonder how well this thing will work on the uh, on the evening flying and uh, before making actually any test flights I think it doesn't make sense to say anything more so thanks a lot uh, Cadix for sending me this this new because this is really a new thing I only wish there was a Vista also why why have not you sent me a Vista as well I love getting Vistas right right and that's all in today's new hardware roundup uh, and that covers basically everything I got my hands on world showing because I'm not even counting some of the flight controllers recently I got from different places because this is a completely different story and uh, what else uh, we will probably meet in the next hardware roundup next month when I have a chance to I might have a chance to get my hands on the quite interesting antennas quite interesting frame and god knows what else the delivery company will bring to me so thank you very much for watching until the next one bye bye oh no stop i completely forgot i also got this this is the toolkit rc m6d ac their new charger uh, you know two channel kind of universal uh, charger that finally has not only the XT60 input so you can power this from the power supply you already have or the bigger LiPo and also has the AC input so you do not actually have to have the uh, separate power supply. I already was using this charger for two weekends and I do have to say that the separate review is required um, and I'm not really 100% sold on the separate AC in this form when there is no switch. Uh, because this thing with the switch, power on off, would be much better, but without it's really kind of complicated because the power 
uh, power supply in this thing is not the most quiet ever and you really have to if you want to sleep in the same place you are charging you have to disconnect the cable to be able to have a good night's sleep so that's the problem however I do like the big LCD I uh, the nice menu and uh, high current and uh, high capacity of the charger it feels kind of good in your hands and uh, it's nice, nice and heavy. And by the way, by the way, have I, you know, the Radio Master and the Toolkit RC are basically, well, almost the same entity. Um, or at least they are managed or owned by the same person. And another reason that the Toolkit and Radio Master can do internet marketing. They are the first one ever that thought of, okay, we will send this hardware to Pavel and also we will make some stickers for him. Yeah, come on, it's so simple. It's not really complex to have a small printer to print some of the color stickers. I'm not saying I will be the, sticking this, those things, everything I can, but it's super nice touch to get your hands on something like that. Why not other companies and their marketing department cannot think about something like that? It's nothing, costs almost nothing, but look, Thanks only to this, I'm uh, giving them extra airtime and I'm telling that I like how the internet marketing department is working. Oh, come on, guys. Is it really that hard to send something with stickers? Yeah, come on. This time it's really all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next one. Bye-bye.